Hello there, my fellow mech aficionados, and welcome back to your weekly dose of the Battletech Battlemex lore. Today we are gonna be covering another heavy mech in the shape of the so-called Cataphract. I don't really have anything savvy to say for today's intro, apart from the fact that this mech has quite an interesting and a bit funny origin story. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us learn more about it, shall we? Some base stats for the Cataphract include It does belong in the heavy category and it weighs 70 tons. Its top speed is 65 km an hour and its rounded price is 13,612,000 seabells. The Cataphract is a heavy battle mech and one of the first original designs since the start of the Succession Wars, though it did have some inauspicious beginnings. Desperate for a heavy mech design that their ailing infrastructure could sustainably produce and maintain, the Capellan Confederation designed the Cataphract in 3025 to be assembled from parts that they could still manufacture. Dubbed a Franken mech for its appearance, and using components from Marauders, Shadowhawks, and Phoenix Hawks, the Cataphract was set to become the Confederation's new standard heavy mech. It entered service just before the Fourth Succession War when the production line on Tychonov fell to the Federated Sons. This embarrassing failure was further compounded when many Davian units, including the Crucis Lancers, adopted the Cataphract as their own design. However, the product quality on Tychonov left the Federated Sons wanting, at least in part due to deliberate obstruction by workers still loyal to the Confederation. It was not until 3032 that the Confederation finally replaced the lost factory with the one on Betelgeuse, producing their own cataphracts just in time for the Andurian Crisis. Shortly after conquering Tychonov, the Federated Commonwealth began work on the CTF 3D, which was intended to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with an assault mech and be as versatile as possible. Despite the upgrades, the CTF-3D was only marginally deployed by the armed forces of the Federated Commonwealth, and was eventually relegated to the Crucis Marsh Militia as an insult to the Capellans. The onset of the clan invasion caused everything still in production, including the Cataphract, to be rushed to the front line. For their part, the Capellans were able to produce the CTF-3D from stolen plants and went about creating their own variant, the CTF-3L, which would go on to make up to 25% of all their newly acquired heavy mechs in the 3050s. In the years afterwards, the use of the design would wane, though some new variants would continue to be produced as new technology and new demands arose. The longest-ranged weapon carried by the CTF-3D Cataphract is a General Motors Nova 5 Ultra AC-5 in the right arm, boasting a rate of fire twice that of a standard autocannon. This is backed up by a Mydron XL LBX Autocannon 10 in the right torso, capable of firing both solid and cluster rounds. This is a more popular weapon than the Ultra AC-5, especially for use in an anti-conventional and anti-aircraft role without the possibility of jamming. Finally, the mech has four Intec medium lasers for close-range defense, one in each arm firing forward and two in the torso covering the rear. With only two tons of ammo for the LBX-10 and only one for the Ultra, if it runs dry it must fall back to reload. 11 tons of armor combined with case allow the cataphract to easily absorb damage. 16 heat sinks keep it cool, while 4 Hiltco Model 12 jump jets give it a jumping distance of 120 meters. Room for all these improvements was made using a GM280 XL engine. And now for some variants of the mech. Keep in mind that the pictures are not always representative. The CTF-OX The Confederation experimented with a cataphract variant carrying the electronic warfare equipment that was mounted on the Raven which was being designed around the same time. It was equipped with a single PPC and an autocannon 5, as well as the two R-mounted lasers. 
the EW equipment, and a remote sensor dispenser on the rear center torso. A single shipment of CTF-OX prototypes was sent to Xeon, but line production did not commence, because the request for more electronic warfare components was denied. The CTF-1X The original Catafract, the 1X model, is armed with a Series Arms Smasher PPC as the main gun, backed up by a Sarlon Maxi Cannon Autocannon 10 with 1 ton of ammo and 4 medium lasers. Built before the discovery of the Helm Memory Core, it lacks any advanced Starlink technology, and it is built with a standard Vox 280 engine. This mech also lacks the jump jets of the 3D model. The CTF 2X Another prototype of the Cataphrag design, the 2X is armed with a much more diverse weapon load. The PPC was replaced with a Fermier Maxi Laser Large Laser, and the arm mounted medium lasers replaced with a Hovertech Quad SRM4 in the left arm. While the Autocannon 10 and the torso mounted medium lasers were kept, the latter were now firing forwards. An extra ton of autocannon ammo is carried, while two heat sinks were replaced by two tons of armor. The CTF 3D D A Capellan experimental unit in 3071, this was based on the CTF 3D. The cockpit weight was increased to 6.5 tons to accommodate a robotic drone control, and the jump jets were also removed. An ER small laser was added to the left arm. These mechs were operated by an AI controller known as the Broken. The CTF 3L Produced by the Capellans based on the stolen Davion designs, the 3L is an upgraded version of the Cataphract which follows more in line with the original prototype 1X model. It is propelled by an XL engine with mask instead of jump jets, allowing it to reach a burst of speed of up to 86.4 kph. While it is also armed with an LBX Autocannon 10 as the main weapon, this is instead matched with a Series Arms Warrior ER PPC. Other differences include the use of four medium pulse lasers and double heatsinks in place of the standard models. This design was produced by the Confederation at Grand Base, following the ascension of Chancellor Romano Liao. The CTF 3LL this basic refit of the 3L replaces the PPC with a plasma rifle. Tonnage was freed up for its 3 tons of ammo by swapping out the two forward-facing lasers for ER medium lasers. The reduced heat load gives the 3LL the luxury of not building up heat before it is damaged. The CDF 4L a Capellan upgrade produced during the 3060s, the 4L was built using a standard fusion engine and using 13.5 tons of stealth armor, along with a Guardian ECM suite for protection. The mech is armed with a Gauss rifle and an ER PPC as the main weapons, giving it a powerful long-range punch. For close-range defense, the mech carries two ER medium lasers. Produced in the wake of the Xinsheng movement and the recapture of Taikonov, the CTF-4L was intended for the growing number of shadow lances within the Capellan military. The CTF-4X The 4X is a Federated Sons prototype produced following the capture of Taikonov, but it never saw much use due to a lukewarm reception. The large laser of the 2X is retained, but all the other weapons are removed in favor of two Autocannon 5s and an LRM-5. In order to fit all this equipment, the top speed is lowered to 56 kph. In a strange and later twist of fate, the copious ammunition bins for the Autocannons became popular with the creation of special ammunition, making this design much more well-liked than it had been in the past. The CTF 5D This upgrade of the 3D removes the weapons and it is powered by a light fusion engine along with enough improved jump jets to leap up to 180 meters. This enables it to bring its plasma rifle and light autocannon 5 to bear, though a one-ton ammunition bin for the autocannon limits its ability to use special munitions. 
two ER medium lasers provide backup in case an enemy closes with the cataphract. The variant is protected by stealth armor and a Guardian ECM suite. The inclusion of a small cockpit allows for the armor value to be increased up to 11.5 tons. Finally for today, a couple of custom variants of this heavy boy. The CTF 3X Cataphract Sara, also known as the Lucky 13. Salvaging her father's mech after his death fighting Clan Jade Falcon on Wotan in 3051, Mech Warrior Sarah Lytton had Lucky 13 fully upgraded prior to the Fedcom Civil War. Adopting a modern take on the 2X variant weapon loadout, the now production grade ER Lodge laser is joined by two ER mediums in the torso, while the SRM4 is swapped out for an ammo efficient Streak SRM4. The standard autocannon replaced with an advanced rotary AC5 is supplied by 3 tons of ammo. It mounts ferrofibrous armor while switching out all the heatsinks to double strength models. The CTF 5 MOC Cataphract Naomi. Naomi Centrella's customized variant used during the Jihad battles on Sion and later Canopus 4 was equipped with a heavy PPC in the right torso and a plasma rifle with 2 tons of ammo in the right arm. Also, it has 4 one-shot 10-tube rocket launchers mounted into both torsos. As secondary weaponry, it has been given a medium pulse laser in the left torso and an extended range medium laser in the right arm. To handle the heat load, this mech has 15 double heat sinks. To better protect the life of the pilot, the mech is encased with stealth armor, with its required Guardian ECM suite. To give it mobility, the customized machine has four jump jets mounted in the torsos. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the Cataphract Heavy Battle Mech for today. A pretty well-armed war machine, which, if nothing else, has a pretty funny history. I don't see it doing any specialized work, but like with many other designs, I think it can serve as a jack of all trades. Is the cataphract among your favorite battle mechs? What do you like or dislike most about it? As always, feel free to express any opinions or thoughts or experiences you might have had with it in the comments below. Was the episode informative or entertaining? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for future content. Thanks a lot for watching, and I wish you all a great day. This is GDN signing out.